So I'm going to say this, and people are probably going to get angry at me, especially all of the Trident, you know, all the people that learned, well, we didn't learn nutrition in medical school, but you know, that school of thought where you should never be hungry and you should eat multiple meals during the day. It's actually okay to be hungry, just so you know. If you're hungry, that means your system was stressed out enough to get hungry, which means, guess what? Your AMPK levels have gone up, your sirtuin levels have gone up, your mTOR has gone down, you don't have too much glucose running around the system, your insulin sensitivity has gone up, and all of your stress response systems have been engaged, you're cleaning up old DNA, you're fixing mutations, you're repairing cell membranes, your receptors are working better, and you're folding improperly folded proteins. So it is okay to be hungry. I'm not advocating starvation here, I'm not advocating anything like that. That. I just want you to know it's okay to be hungry. So time-restricted feeding will help with this, okay? This is the most effective method to enhance the cellular repair systems in your body. So again, I told you I started doing this just for this purpose, just to be healthier and optimize my aging. So you can time-restrict your feeding and that gives your body enough time to be fasted, okay? If you're eating up until midnight and you're not getting a good sleep, like let's say you don't sleep well and you're watching TV and you're having snacks at midnight and then you have to wake up at six to go to work and you start with like some kind of sugary breakfast, well that means you only had about five hours, but guess what? It takes about five hours for food to pass through the gut to even get to the fasted state. So you never are fasted if that's kind of the way you, you go about your business. So you gotta restrict it where you have enough time, enough of a window to allow these repair things to happen. So that can range from a 12-12 schedule to a 10-14 to a 16-8. Um, probably we're gonna have to do a whole talk on time-restricted eating because it's just such a big topic. Um, but basically, once you start doing this and your liver gets used to it and your liver starts to do what's called gluconeogenesis on demand when you have lower blood sugar, you get a steady state where your blood sugar stays the same and you never really have spikes. And then ideally, it's 87 or less like we talked about.